have you here, and I hope uh, you've had a good morning already. Man, hang out with us uh, uh, outside afterwards. We got all kind of cool stuff, getting, seeing people baptized. Well, uh, I, I'm so excited for today and, and God's message. It's been an awesome weekend. How many of you guys were at the men's event yesterday? It was so amazing. Had a great time. God's already moved in the first couple services. It's been really cool. And today, uh, uh, man, we have an incredible guest speaker today. Uh, a major league baseball player, four-time uh, uh, World Series champion, over 335 home runs. But that's not why we, we invited uh, Daryl Strawberry to be here with us today. Um, we invited him because of the call of God on his life. And um, we have mutual friends. His pastor, uh, his pastor in St. Louis, Missouri is uh, one of my friends. Actually, his pastor has preached here uh, before. And when I found out Daryl went to his church, I said, man, hook a brother up, man. I, I need to know him. I, I need to make it happy. He said, what better weekend to work this out in, uh, than July 4th weekend? Here's why. Um, I remember growing up on July 4th weekend, going to baseball games, seeing the fireworks. And so uh, it just made sense that, that, and it worked out with his schedule that he could be here. Um, uh, but in all seriousness, uh, uh, one of the best baseball players, one of the best swings of all time. I mean, just, um, I remember, anybody remember 1986? Come on, old people, show, show, me, show me some love. You remember 1986? Um, well, I was only nine years old, but I, I remember this. It was the, 1986 was the first World Series I was able to watch. Any Boston fans in the room? Man, I'm so grateful for 1986, Daryl. That was a fun year. But let me just say this. Uh, uh, you know, on Super Bowl Sunday, it's on Sunday, but, but man, World Series is like seven games during the week, school night. I remember begging my dad, can we please, I love the mess, can we stay up and watch this, this series? And I uh, and, uh, obviously fell in love with that team. Uh, as a as a young boy, he loved baseball. You look up to these baseball heroes, and obviously Daryl was one of the uh, the main guys on that team and of that era. Um, you know, but what's amazing is this, is, is getting to see him here this weekend, uh, my respect level for him is way higher than, than anything he ever did on a baseball field. Um, and this is a guy who's rounded bases 335 times, having people stand and cheering, but now he's doing something where all of heaven is standing up and cheering because he's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he encountered Jesus. Jesus radically changed him uh, and then called him into ministry uh, and, uh, and, and to preach in the gospel. And, uh, and so, you know, what's, I'm a pastor, but I'm also a pastor's kid, which means I've grown up in this. Um, and I've seen people that you can hand a microphone to and do well on stage, but they're completely different off the stage. Um, I can just tell you from hanging out here with him this weekend, he's the real deal. He's humble. He loves Jesus. He loves the church. Uh, um, and I uh, got to go to dinner with him, uh, uh, introduced him to my nephew who uh, plays baseball. And he just, man, the way that he just leaned in uh, with my nephew and, and then with the guys, uh, th just thank you for loving Jesus, but thank you for loving people. Um, and thank you for letting God use you. I, I told him this morning when I was watching his ministry, I said, man, you remind me of Jesus because Jesus was full of grace and truth. And I'm telling you today, y'all going to hear some truth today. This guy is not afraid to tell you like it is, but he also... He also does this. He loves you, and he loves Jesus. He lo he's full of grace and truth. Um, and I'm just excited for how the Holy Spirit is using you in this day. Um, and I know as former baseball players, you may look back. I know some guys are like, man, those were the good old days. That was kind of my, the highlight of my life. I'm here to declare over your life the best is yet to come. Your best days are ahead of you, not behind you. And it's just such an honor to have you here. As I was talking to him, I said, man, where were you last week? He was just, last weekend, he was in this small little church in Houston, Texas uh, called Lakewood with Pastor Joel Osteen. I don't know if y'all ever heard of that church. It's like the biggest church in America. I said, oh, cool, man. You're going from there to here. It just gets better for you, bro. You're going from there to destination. Hey, we may not be the biggest, but I tell you, we're going to be the best place you've ever preached at. Would y'all get on your feet? Welcome, Daryl Strawberry, to come bring the word of God to us this morning. Love you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, wow, wow. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Brian, and I appreciate you. I appreciate your hospitality. I appreciate your team. I appreciate the staff and everyone that's volunteer, everyone that has a part of uh, being in the church, because the church is the most important place in life. Amen. We've, we've gotten it all wrong. We think it's everything else, but it's the church that is important. Amen. We've gotten away from the biblical principles. That's why we're in the mess that we are in. Amen. 
because we won't repent and turn back to God. You know, God is calling his people to return back, come back home. He's got something great and mighty for you. It's just a matter of just, you know, bringing your family and being in church and realizing that this is important. These days are important. These times are important. You know, if you don't have a foundation, a covenant over your family, the devil's going to get them. It's no joke. So let us pray. Father, we love you, honor you, praise you. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for the church house. We thank you for the leadership here. We thank you for all that you do. But Father, I ask that you multiply and increase them. Keep putting a hedge of protection around them. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. Father, they more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. You called them for this time to do great work. May the harvest be now. May the souls enter now, Father. May they run the church. May they have a burning desire to come to church, to get free, to get delivered from whatever bondage they're in. Father, we know that we struggle with earthly things, but we know when we seek after your kingdom, we get the victory over all these earthly things. And Father, we send this petition up to you, and we ask that you seal it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory to God. And those online and wherever you may be and sitting here, I know God is going to speak to you, and he's going to touch your heart, and hopefully you make a decision at the end of the day that you want to turn from these wicked ways. You know, because, see, I wasn't always like this. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I had a mother who was praying for me. I grew up in a home that was broken and dysfunctional. My dad was a raging alcoholic. I need to share a couple of things with you first. But my dad was a raging alcoholic and came home for the last time, pulled out a shotgun when I was 14, said he was going to kill the whole family. You know, me and my brothers went into action. Had it not been for my mother getting us out of the house, we would have killed him. Could have been a tragedy in my life before I ever put a uniform on. I always say I was broken before I ever put the uniform on. Smoking weed and, you know, doing all the things that I thought was cool and, you know, just getting consumed with all those things and, you know, getting kicked out of four junior high schools and, you know, going to high school and playing baseball. And I remember my 10th grade year, you know, I was so broken on the inside and I was running off the field and then I started walking and the coach came and thumped me in the head and said, don't ever walk off this field again. I took the uniform off and threw it in his face and quit. That's the reality of a broken person. And the reality that we live in today in a society is broken. You know, everybody think everything else is uh, more important, social media and groups and this and that. No, the most important thing that's going to be in your life is this Bible right here. And it's your relationship with Christ. Because if you want, if you truly want victory, if you really want to be free, that's the only way you're going to be free. There's no other way to get free. Most people think I'm going to get free by just being part of something and being something and doing this and doing that. That's not going to set you free. Listen, I've been there and done that. Trust me. I was an alcoholic, drug addict, sinner, rich, famous, privileged, lived behind community gates, had it all, but had nothing. Ended up being saved by grace. And it's the grace of God. It's the grace of God. It's the grace of God that saves a man's life. See, the best is yet to come, but the last service today is the best service. Y'all picked the right time to come to church. Don't make this your last time coming to church. Too many folks make this this is the last time because they have a guest speaker. Well, your pastor is a guest speaker every Sunday. You need to be here. You need to be here so you can learn, so you can grow, so you can change, so you can have victory. You can't get victory if you have more. Most folks say, well, I'll get victory if I get more stuff. No, you won't. You'll never come to church. You'll be like all the rest of us heathens, you know, who had everything and, and, and have everything but have nothing. I just accumulate a bunch of wealth and thing and fame, you know, and, and none of them can stay married and stay together. They're always breaking up one partner to this partner to that partner, but that's cool. No, somebody forgot to tell them that you're living outside of God's will. Amen. So I'm glad my mother prayed for me and my sister found a journal under her bed after... She passed away at the age of 55 from terminal breast cancer. And in her journal, she was praying for all her kids. And when it got to me, she said, God, knock him off of his throne. Mm. Boy, mama wasn't playing, was she? 
See, that's a mother for you that loves Jesus. She's not going to tell me I need to follow Jesus. She's going to live for Jesus, and she's going to pray for her kids. She dies to go home. Mama had to, mama had to die and leave so I can live. Because I remember at her funeral, I was so heartbroken, like, God, why would you take her? She's a good, good woman. Why did you take me? And you know what God spoke to me and said? She does not belong to you. So that means she had to die so I can live and my brothers and sisters could live. My father ended up being a man that I hated, never had in my life my career, get to, didn't get to enjoy my career and meet his grandchildren or nothing. I hated him. So God saves me and I'm changed. I'm going to do a men's conference in California. I got to speak on a Saturday morning. God speaks to me on a Friday night and says, I want you to go to the hospital and I want you to repent to your father. I say, what? <laughs> I call my wife. I say, God is all over me. My father's in the hospital down in San Diego. My brother tells me he's in the hospital. He's had a stroke. He's sick. So God tells me what to do. I call my wife. I said, this is what the Lord says. She said, you need to go down on Sunday. You need to do exactly what he said. He said, I don't want you saying anything about what your father did to you. I want you to repent to him and ask him to forgive you for keeping you keeping him out of your life and your career and not knowing the grandkids. I do exactly that on that Sunday. And I get down there and see him. I said, you know the Lord has changed me. Um, would you forgive me for keeping you out of my life and my career and not meeting your grandkids? He shook his head said yes, and a tear came out of his eye, and I lost it. I just lost it. I laid in his lap, and I just cried so hard. I told him I was so sorry. God said, raise up after a minute or so. After crying so hard and just crying and weeping, God said, raise up. He says, now lead him in the sin of prayer. The man that rejected me and beat me, God using me to lead him in the sin of prayer. So I lead him in the sin of prayer. I lead him in the sin of prayer. He gets saved. Six months later, he dies. Goes home to be with the Lord. See, what God was teaching me in that was the forgiveness was not for him. The forgiveness was for me. That's why I stayed broken all those years. That's why so many of us can't get free because we're holding somebody hostage, but you're holding your own self hostage. Amen. You wonder why you can't get free, why you feel the way you feel. See, ever since I re released my father and did that where God said, I was released from the pain. It was no longer there. Now God can send me this way. He didn't have to hold me back anymore because I had this heart that was a stone heart that I wouldn't forgive because of what happened. And God says, how dare you not forgive him and I forgave you. I extended grace to you, but you won't extend grace to somebody else. How dare you not give somebody else grace? See, this is the problem that we have among ourselves. Why we can't get free. Because the enemy is always deceiving us and making us saying, well, it's their fault and that fault and that fault. And we're pointing fingers at them. And we can never get to the place that God wants us to get to because it's everybody else's fault instead of just releasing them and letting it be. Because there's a victory in releasing some situations. Broken homes. Dysfunctional homes. There's no white picket fence. We have it all together. The devil's been lying. See, when we come to the reality of the Bible, what is the Bible? It's a simple book for complicated people. It's a very simple book for complicated people. See, I couldn't get to this point because I was very complicated. It wasn't until I released things and went back and did things a different way. And I repented to my first wife and my second wife and told them, I'm sorry, I wasn't a good husband, I was a good father. I was a liar, a cheater, heathen man. Because the society tells you, if you're rich and famous, you can do whatever you want. But if you forget to tell you, you can pick your sins, but you can't pick your consequences. You can pick them all day long. But you cannot pick the consequences that's coming with them. Yeah. So I had some major consequences, you know. I had some consequences of, you know, 
going to prison with a T17169 because of addiction, end up with cancer twice because of alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, all the things that I was using, marijuana, all the stuff, all of it has an effect on you somewhere down the line. You can pick your sins, but you cannot pick the consequences. The only thing that I'm thankful for is the fact that God didn't let me die out there. I'm here today because of grace. There's nothing great about me. It's the grace of God that's been given to me. And see, when you get to the place of understanding the grace, what is grace? Grace is something you don't deserve, and he gives it to you anyway. Everybody that walked through this door had grace today. Every time you wake up, you got grace. Because it didn't have to be. Tomorrow's not promised to none of us. The enemy's been deceiving all of us for many years and years and years. Do whatever you want. Have fun. Dangle out, dangle this. You can have this. And you can have that. I was preaching to the man yesterday. He was talking about overcoming the temptations. The enemy tempting Jesus just like he tempts all of us. Jesus was tempted by him. So will we be tempted. Why won't we be tempted? Jesus was a man with no sin in him. And we are sinners saved by grace. So you think he's not going to tempt you and keep bringing the temptations to try to deceive you, to make you believe all this stuff here is important? Jesus talks about it in John 10.10. 10. Jesus said, the, enemy, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and may have it more abundantly. But see, we got abundant life wrong, Pastor. See, abundant life is not a bunch of stuff. Abundant life is peace, joy, wisdom, knowledge, power. I'm going to give you something far greater than you can ever imagine. People don't understand that. He's going to give you something that you cannot even comprehend, that you don't even deserve, and he's going to give it to you anyway. I'm going to give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. So what does that mean? That means I'm not worried about anything. Is there going to be some trials and tribulations? Yes. Is there going to be some storms? Yes. Either you're in a storm, you're coming out of a storm, or a storm's on the way. But guess what? If you walk with Jesus and Jesus is Lord over your life, you do not drown in the storm. There is no drowning in the storm. You only drown when you don't have a foundation. When you have a firm foundation with God, you do not drown in the storm. You pass through the storm. Glory to God. See, the church, we need to understand, you don't have a testimony until you pass the test. I had to keep going back and taking the test because I was failing the test. You know, like you're in school. I kept failing the test with God. And God says, well, you don't have a testimony until you pass the test. Because they wanted to, everybody wanted to put me in front of everything to speak and and my wife was like, no, he's not speaking. He don't have a testimony right now. He's got to pass the test. And I'm grateful. You know, I'm grateful that God uses women to bring a man to a true understanding of purpose of life. It is the greatest gift you will ever receive if you receive it. If you don't put your ego in front of it and receive it, you will get the victory over all this other stuff. You will realize that you don't have to accumulate all this other stuff to make you important. Now you'll be able to walk according to what God created you to walk like. And that's because you passed the test. And if you don't pass the test, you got to go back and take it over again. And you got to keep taking it over and over. The enemy purpose is to deceive you. He comes to steal your identity so you do not know who you are. That's his whole purpose is to steal your identity so you do not know who you are. See, he wants me to think, I'm Daryl Strawberry, but I'm not Daryl Strawberry, the baseball player anymore. That guy's dead. The uniform is off. You see so many guys stick around because they can't, they can't get rid of the uniform. You know, they, 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 they talk about me now. They was, oh, with well, that Daryl Strawberry, man, he's, he's all about Jesus now. Well, you be, you're going to be about something. <laughs> Might as well be about Jesus. 
You gonna be about something else. Well, I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be full of stuff wearing the uniform and wearing the titles. I wanna work for the king. I wanna have a kingdom impact. I don't wanna have an earthly impact. I wanna win souls. I don't wanna win games anymore. I don't go to games, you know, they don't, you know, they, you know, they, they say, well, don't you watch baseball? No. Don't you go to the games? No, half of the time I don't. I've only been in one game this year. And they, they invited me back for, like, old timers. I said, okay, I'll come to that. Y'all twisting my arm. I said, tell you what, I'll put the uniform on, but I'm not playing. Because I'm not a baseball player anymore. I'm a child of the king. The enemy purpose is to deceive you. He comes to kill your purpose so you do not know why you exist. Man, the existing of you is far greater than you can ever imagine. God created us all for good. But we all would step the face of the earth and we all would fall short. Every last one of us would become sinners. And that's okay to recognize that. See, because a lot of times people don't want to recognize that. Well, I can't, if I don't recognize that I'm sinner, sinner I can never reach the Savior. Because you'll never think you need him. <laughs> you'll never think you need him. You'll think you can do it on your own. I can live this way. I can live on any kind of way and be on any kind of way. Well, go right ahead. Then you wonder why you're not receiving the fruits and the blessings of God. See, because you receive the fruits and blessings of God when you're obedient to God, when you obey God. Because when I started this journey, my wife Tracy was pulling me out of dope houses. I was shooting dope and smoking crack, and I was $3 million in debt, and she was pulling me out of dope houses, banging on doors, kicking them down, and saying, get out of here. God's got a plan for you. I says, why don't you let God just leave me here and let me die? She goes, you're just not that lucky. <laughs> See, my story is my story, but let me tell you this. Every last one of you got a story about yourself in here, too. But where is God taking you with your story? See, your story is your glory of who he is to help somebody else. See, when you get over yourself and realize it's not about you and you realize it's about the kingdom, you can use your story to help somebody else. You see, when we come obedient to God and obey God, and my young people that's in here, obey God. I'm telling you, if you obey God and don't live in a sinful lifestyle, you'll save yourself a lot of headaches. A lot of headaches. You will save yourself a lot of headaches because sin takes you further than you want to stay and keeps you longer than you could ever imagine. If you pay attention to what I'm saying, young people, and listen, you'll save yourself from all the headaches that you're going to run into living in any old kind of way. Because, see, the enemy doesn't want you to know that you can live for God and you can live holy and acceptable into God and you can live the right way and you can save yourself until you get married to do what you want to do. You don't have to be in this kind of relationship. Oh, we in love. <laughs> well, you're young. Got a long way to go. God's got a plan for your life and it's greater than you can ever imagine. I wish I would have listened to my mama. So hard-headed and wanted to do it my way. Guess what? You pay a price when you don't listen. Hear the voice of God and hear God speak to you and challenge you, you know, because it's going to change your destiny and where you're going and everything, what you're doing. You're going to see things clear. You can't see when sin has trapped you. It blinds you. It keeps you trapped, and it keeps you going in the wrong direction. And then when God comes into your life, Jesus sets you free with his blood. You no longer have to wear the blinders anymore. Now you can see. Now you understand why I'm here. I know it's a nation that don't like to hear it, but I'm sorry. God's called me to preach it. Too bad if they don't like to hear it. If you really want to have a transformation in your life, you'll take heed to what I'm saying. And you'll run with it. And you'll win. You know, winning is not what you see on television. Winning is seeing when you in a room with God by yourself and you're on your face and you're crying out to God. That's when, you, that's when you're winning. 
The enemy purpose is to deceive you, destroy your mission so you do not know what to do. He does not want you to know what to do. I do not have an education for going to school. I got a biblical education from the Holy Spirit. I only have a high school education, played Major League Baseball for 17 years. God called me to preach. I told him, you got the wrong guy. <laughs> I ain't got an education to dive into the Bible, but the Holy Spirit does. Right. So when he ascended up on me, God said he's going to teach you all things. Listen to him. And guess what he did? He taught me the Bible supernaturally. Because you know what, you know what church, what people don't understand about God? God does not lie. Oh, y'all missed that. God does not lie. You don't understand. When I was looking out the window and God called me 15 years ago to preach, and I was looking out the window and I was crying, and he says, you crying now, but you're going to be preaching in arenas and stadiums. He says, you have no idea what I'm about to do with you and Tracy in your ministry. He says, what you need to go home and you need to saturate yourself with the Holy Spirit and listen to him and let him teach you the Bible and let him teach you what scriptures mean. You, See, the reason why people are perishing is because lack of knowledge. Yeah. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Yeah. They got worldly knowledge, but they don't have kingdom knowledge. Yeah. Kingdom knowledge is far greater than any worldly knowledge you will ever get. Yeah. Because of kingdom, not worldly knowledge is like this. Kingdom knowledge is like this. It, what happens is it just it doesn't, God doesn't stop here when he starts you here, but he keeps taking you like this. He keeps taking you like this. He just keeps giving you more. See, the more you surrender yourself, the more he gives to you. The more you turn off the cell phone and the television, the more he will pour into you. Because he can't get your attention if you're distracted by everything else. So the enemy is, is there to destroy you and distract you with everything else and make you believe that everything else is good. The devil's been lying forever. See, a lot of us don't even know who he is. His name is Lucifer. He was in heaven, the worship leader. He got kicked out of heaven because he wanted to be bigger than God. And he took angels with him. So he's out there doing what he's supposed to do, destroying people, Christians, not having victory. Man, you can't tell me that I'm, I, I shouldn't be having victory if I know this book. Amen. Amen. Victory comes from this book. Amen. It doesn't come from anything else. It doesn't come from anything great about me or great about you. It comes out of the Bible. Yes. Yes. It's been here forever. <laughs> Some of you need to stop eating Burger King and eat steak. Yes. Really taste and see how good the Lord really is. Don't nothing taste like Jesus. When you understand Jesus at the cross of Calvary, shedding his blood for you and me and going to the tomb and getting up early Sunday morning with all power in his hand for you, you will have the victory when you understand that. It's the fight that you have to fight. It's the word that you have to believe. John 3.30 talks about it. He must increase, but I must decrease. That means I must die daily, and he must increase so I can be strong, so I can turn from these worldly wicked things. I don't have to look at these. I, ooh, oh, hallelujah. I don't have to look at them. I don't have to look at them. I don't have a problem with nothing. I'm not in no anxiety, depression, fear, doubt. No, why? Because I'm covered by the blood. I'm not a victim. I'm overcome by the blood. Too many people are sitting in that victim mentality. Get out of that victim mentality and be an overcomer. Rise up for Jesus. Worship Jesus. Praise God. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him everything. Everything that you have in your soul, give it to the Lord. Stop giving it to yourself. He is worthy for it. He did it for you. 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 He did it. He's already done it for you. You remember when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's what he's talking about in the nation of people of us. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Those 
foolish people on television talking foolish. They got to answer to God one day. Nobody gets away. It's something that we have to understand. Ephesians 3.20, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. It is his power that works in us. It is his power that gives you victory over all these things. It is your heart that God wants. He doesn't need anything from you. He just needs you to be available. He needs you to say, I will do it. Whatever it is, a ministry is not just about preaching. Because be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. And getting in a pulpit, I remember when God called me, he said, don't play in that pulpit. You can play everywhere else, but he said, don't, don't play in that pulpit. Because there's nothing to play with. Working for God is nothing to play with. But it's a good thing. What a privilege it is that he would allow us broken people to come as we are and work for him. He's not looking for a perfect person because there is none. And we have to stop living in this fantasy and we have to repent and come back home. See, when you repent, it's the greatest thing that ever happens to a person is to repent to God. You save yourself. He saves your soul. It's not what you look like from the outside perspective. It's what's the inside is looking like, your soul that needs to be saved. God is never mad at nobody. He loves everybody. And the book of John is about believing. The miracle of Jesus doing miracles, turning water into wine, feeding the 5,000, raising Lazarus from the dead, pulling you from where he will pull you from. If you make a decision today to come to Jesus, you never have to look back. Whatever struggle it may be, whatever may be hurting you, whatever rejection, whatever happened to you, Jesus already killed it for you on the cross. The miracle of Jesus is like when he told Nicodemus in John 3, unless one is born again, Cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. He's not talking about here. We all been in, we all been on this earthly thing here. I'm talking about the other side. See, when you be born again and come of God, you come of the Spirit. Now you operate from a different capacity. Now you operate from hearing God, and you hear from His kingdom. God let old broken sinner like me be transformed. You know why? Because He loves the broken pieces. Because he knows that I could take them and I could put them back together. And when I put them back together, they're going to stay like this. Because you remember Saul. You remember Saul who was coming and on Damascus Road and he got knocked off the horse and blinded. Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And knocks him off a horse and blind him for three days and three nights. But Saul wasn't a hero. A man by the name of Ananias become the hero because God gives him the vision to see him so he can go lay hands on Saul so Saul can get his sight back. And Saul would be turned into the Apostle Paul, and he would go on to write 13 epistles, which is letters. The Bible is fire. When you learn about all these different people, they're just like us. They were just a different generation. They all had issues. Just like us. Whatever it may be for you, alcohol, drugs, lust, porn, anything that you're stuck on, Jesus already paid the price for you to be delivered. Yeah. Amen. Even your marriage, even a need, whatever need you have, God has it for you. But you have to obey him. You have to commit yourself. You have to surrender yourself to him and follow him. 
Deny yourself. Pick up your cross. Carry your cross. Become everything that God wants you to become before your day is over. Tomorrow's not promised to none of us. So many people say, well, I'll wait till tomorrow. Well, you know what? When the pandemic came, everybody was in fear because people were dying. That's probably just the beginning. I don't know what else is going to happen. Something else is going to come. But I do know one thing. If God calls my name and it's time for me to go, I do know one thing. Absence from the body will be presence with the Lord. I'm going home. I do know that for a fact. I know for a fact that I win either way. If I stay here, I win. If I don't, I win. But everybody can't say that because they haven't committed themselves. This is the greatest commitment you will ever make in your life. Better than your boyfriend, better than your husband, better than your wife, better than your job, better than anything I will achieve from here because everything that I achieve from here means nothing at the end of the day. Absolutely nothing. King Solomon said it in the book of Ecclesiastes, everything is meaningless under the sun without God. Everything. He didn't mean some things. He's talking about it all. So dive in. John 4, the woman at the well. What I love about Jesus, there's no secrets. <laughs> he told that woman at the well about her five husbands, say the one you're living with now is not your husband. She was like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> but it's the living water he's talking about. The living water, if you drink this living water, you'll never thirst again. See, the living water is Christ himself. It's living water. It's not about me being cool or anything. It's the living water. Because Christ is the living water. And if you drink that, you'll never thirst again. See, ever since I've been drinking it, I've never been thirsty. My wife has never been thirsty. We have such a good marriage. We have such a good ministry. We have such a good life because we're not thirsty because we drank the living water. He feeds us. He feeds you. The living water feeds you. Then you go to John 8. Don't be like the scribes and the Pharisees. John 8, they wanted to stone the woman because she was caught in adultery. Don't be like them. Don't be pointing at people's sin. Because when you point at them, three fingers are pointing back at you. Because Jesus was hanging out and stooping in the sand, he raised up and he said, he who without sin cast the first stone. From the oldest to the youngest dropped these stones because guess what? They all had fallen short. Every last one of us falls short. God teaches us to love people. I'm not here to judge anyone. I'm here to love you. I'm here to tell you that Christ loves you. I'm here to tell you that he has a place for you. No matter what, you're not too far off from him. No matter what, he still has a place for you. And then he asked him, the woman, he said, woman, where are your accusers? Did anyone accuse you? She said, no. He said, neither do I. Go. And listen to this. Sin no more. There, see, what I'm trying to tell you, this is a man that tells people, you and me, to go and sin no more. You don't have to live out of, out of your place in your life with God in your life. You don't have to live on the other side of doing things just because I want to do them. Just because my flesh wants me to do it. Let the spirit man come alive in you today. Let God touch you. God is moving on your life so you can have victory over yourself. See, I got victory over myself. I don't have to worry about the enemy, you know, because I got victory. I, I don't worry about that. I, I'm, I'm not tempted to run off this way. I'm not tempted to go that way. I'm not tempted to go back to baseball. I'm not tempted to go when I go back to the reunions. Everybody's hanging in the bars and they sit there and they say, well, you don't even come in the bars no more. No, because I'm not a heathen anymore. I'm not tempted. I'm not better than them, but I just made a better decision. That's all it is. It's about a decision. It's about a decision. It's about a decision. It's about making a decision. 
And I'm done with this. I'm going to go with the woman in Mark 5 with the blood issue. She had a blood issue for 12 years. And she paid all kind of doctors and paid all kind of money to get well. Just like most of us. We'll take our money and pay the doctor. Oh, therapist, make me well. She did the same thing. No different than what we were doing. I did the same thing. But she heard about Jesus. And she thought if she could only get to the crowd, if she could only get a touch of Jesus. She made her way through the crowd. You know what got her through the crowd? Her heart and her head. To make her way to get through the crowd, to touch the hem of his garment. And she was made well immediately. But, immediately. but Jesus was looking around to, to his disciples, who touched me? And they were thinking, well, out of all these people, what do you mean who touched you? But see, Jesus knew that the power that went out of him touched somebody and it healed somebody. Because he has a healing power. And she came back trembling and was thought she was in trouble and saying, I'm sorry. But he says, daughter, daughter, your faith has made you well. It is your faith that makes you well. Faith is the substance of things. Hope for the evidence of things not seen. Thank you for your help this weekend, my brother. I appreciate you. It's nothing like appreciating people. Worship team, the church, family, pastors, leaders, and the people. God loves you. Now, as we bow our heads, I'm going to make a call for anyone that in the need, whatever your need may be. I don't need to know, but I'm going to pray for you. When I say come, that means come. Don't let the enemy hold you back in your seat, believe that you have it all together because he's been doing that forever and I can't get free because I won't make a commitment. But today is your day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. He's made it for you to make a decision. All you have to do is say, no more. I don't want to do this no more. You know what it is and God knows what it is. And if that's you, come right now. Come, don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Come right now in the name of Jesus, right now. Let him go, devil. Let him go. Loosen him. Let him go right now. Let her go right now. Come, come, come to the cross. Come, make your way to the cross. Right now, right now, right now, right now, my young people. Make your way to the cross. You don't have to live among this society and what people are talking about. You don't have to live in it no more. God loves you, young lady. Don't you worry about it. Your tears are for him. Young lady, God loves you. He's crazy about you. It does not matter. It come right now. Come. Many are coming. Come, come, come. Right now, today, today, today. Surrender it today. Surrender it today. Tomorrow, never may get here. Come right now in the name of Jesus. Let him go right now. Come on, brother. Come on down. I said, make your way to the cross. Victory's at the cross. So many of us will walk out of here, and we won't believe this, and we'll stay the same. We'll keep doing the same thing because we won't respond to who God is. But I tell you what, we'll respond to TikTok and everything else. We'll respond to every celebrity when they live a filthy, sinful life, and we think it's cool. I'm here to tell you, I don't have time to play. There's an urgency. The day of Christ, the second coming of Christ, will come back one day. You don't want to be here when that happens. I'm telling you right now, you do not want to be here when that happens. We don't know when, but we know he's got to come back. Because as you look at the signs and you look at all the things that are happening, it's supposed to happen. They're supposed to disobey God and follow their own ways. That's where we at. Own ways. Social media, Facebook. People be on Facebook debating. I don't debate about Jesus. Jesus is Jesus. There's no bait. He's Lord. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. There's no other. So don't you worry about it. You that are here today, come closer. Come closer. We're family. Come closer, man. I, you know, I love you guys. And God loves you so much. He's crazy about you. Let him in. Surrender it. He's got it. He'll take care of you. He'll take care of you, I promise. Some of you women, y'all got to make decisions. You got to make decisions. You got to make real decisions. I'm not going to compromise. 
My wife Tracy said, I'm not compromising with you no more. I'm going to follow Jesus. We wasn't married. She said, you ain't having me no more. I said, what? <laughs> and that sent me on my journey to get right. Sent her on her journey, got right, and we came back together, and we got right, and we got together with God, and God blessed us. See, the reason why victory is not happening because you're not getting right with God. God will send the right person to you. Stop giving yourself away, ladies. Brothers, we need to become the men that God's called us to be. Stand up. Take your rightful place. Honor what's right. Live right. Live according to the biblical principles. You will get the victory if you live according to the biblical principles. It's there. It's always been there. The people. Heaven is celebrating your life today. Every last one of you that are down here. There's a celebration for you. Make a decision. Connect. Connect with the body of Christ. Connect with church. Women with women. Men with men. Connect so you can get well, so you can have this life and live it to the fullness till God calls you home. It's our time. Time for the church to rise up and people to rise up and take their rightful place. God is not mad at you. God will never leave you or forsake you. Just trust the process. Walk it out. Let me pray for you. Then I'm going to have your pastor come up and speak life into you. Follow your head. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you for every soul that's here today. Father, we thank you for those that wanted to make the step but didn't make the step. But, Father, we thank you for those that had the courage to make a step in a confession to you. Lord, they need you. They need answers from you. And all answers come from you. Put them in the right position, in the right place in their life to be everything that you created them to be. Let them know that they don't have to compromise anymore with what's out there. The devil's been lying, deceiving them. We rebuke his devourer right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you strengthen every one of them today. Father, I ask that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Put a hedge of protection around them. And Father, we send this petition up to you today, and we ask that you seal it over them and crown them from the top of the head to the bottom of their feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay right here. Here's your pastor, Pastor Brian, and you got a good one. Enjoy it and make the best out of it so you can get fed, so you can grow, 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 and grow. Amen. Give it up to my man here on Strong Creek. Come on. Can we all stand right now? Come on. We stand. Give God some praise. And thank you so much. I, I heard him preach all day. He brought it in this last one. I told him before he came out, I was like, hey, it's ninth inning, you guys. Ninth <laughs> inning, base is loaded. You got to bring it. Um, I want you guys that are down here to stay down here, but I want to pray for you. But I want to pray for all of us because how many know this, that no weapon formed against us has to prosper? That, that God's listening. Here's what we do even in our culture, I, and I told the guys this. A lot of us uh, uh, look up to somebody like Daryl Strawberry, and, and but here's what I want you to know about God. God's not looking down in this room and thinking, oh, my goodness, I can't believe Daryl Strawberry's here. You know that God's not thinking that at all? You know what God's thinking? God's thinking, oh, my goodness, look, you're here, and you're here, and you're here. How many know God is proud of you? He knows your name, and God's got a purpose and a plan for you. And... And I just believe this, this, and this is what I want to pray. Today is Freedom Sunday, and I'm just believing whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I, I don't know what needs you came down here for. I don't know what needs you have out there, but I just know this, Jesus knows. And if you'll bring it to Jesus, I believe there is freedom in Jesus' name. How many know Jesus can break every addiction? He can break every bondage. He can set people free. Come on, can we lift our hands all across this place as a sign of surrender? And then Pastor Kyle is going to come and close us out. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every person here today that maybe just came forward or raised their hands because they need to give their lives to Jesus. They've been running from God, and I pray that today they'll stop running from you and they'll run to you. The Bible says if we'll confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. And so, Lord, I pray for everyone here that needs to get right with you. Lord, make heaven their destination. It's not about what they've done. It's not about where they've been. It's where they're going that matters. But, Lord, there are also people down here and standing right now that need a healing in their bodies. 
They need freedom in their mind. So I pray that addictions will be broken in Jesus' name. I just declare where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Lord, I pray for every drug addiction, every mental addiction. Lord, I am believing that your people will be who you've called them to be. God, may we stop being what other people say we are. May we stop being who we think we are. May we be who you say that we are. God, may we get back our identity. May we know our calling. May we walk in the power of God. May we not know about Jesus. May we know Jesus. Lord, I pray that today, what we heard from Daryl, when we shut the phone off, the TV off, when we open our Bibles, when we get in a place of worship and seeking and knowing God, because that's where the victory is. Lord, I am believing for victory in every person here today. God, Lord, I pray for marriages. I pray for families. I pray for teenagers. I pray for sons and daughters. Lord, heal, deliver, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Set us free. May we walk in the power of God. Unify your church. May we reach people like never before. God, raise this church up in this community to make a difference for the kingdom of God. And, Lord, we're going to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen, amen. Come on, can we give Jesus some praise today? Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching the Destination Church YouTube channel. But don't stop there. Hit the like, the share button, and definitely subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with everything that we want to give you. Hey, if it's impacted your life, please pray about giving financially to help people find their destination in Christ. Hey, just know it's not about where you've been. It's where you're going that matters, and the best is yet to come.